All right, everyone. Hello and welcome. Welcome back. All right, welcome back after my time away this week. I come back, well, <laughs> I come back with many things. I come back <clears throat> with at least a kind of a refreshed voice. I haven't really been talking that much the past few days, which is a good thing. Um, at the same time, I'm tired. I'm sore. I'm sunburnt in only certain places, which is pretty bizarre. And I am completely allergized. And what I mean by that is, uh, if you guys aren't aware, um, allergies went into crazy overdrive here in the state of Washington uh, these past few days. And I'm not even kidding. Monday, my first day away from streaming, <clears throat> it was snowing. And was it snowing, you know, water ice ice molecules no it was snowing pollen there was this cottony pollen in the air and it was crazy it was just crazy uh <clears throat> the amount of uh pollen in the air it was just out of control and i immediately you know i have i have pollen allergies now my pollen allergies usually they're a little annoying but i can get over them oh my god this week like, I, my eyes were watering. I was sneezing constantly. Ugh. <laughs> uh, well, what a great time to have time off when I am suffering from the, you know, and I took, I did take medicine. I've got, you know, generic, generic uh, Claritin or whatever it is. Um, and I started, you know, popped a lot of that. I'm on that right now. Right now, I'm on not only generic Claritin, but I'm also on a decongestant because my whole right nostril's uh, congested. I woke up this morning all congested from these allergies. I'm like, ugh, yuck. But it is what it is, guys. Um, so, a lot of people immediately have already been asking me, what have I been doing when I was away? I'm not going to give you guys super specific details, simply because, as I said to you guys, the more that I reveal about my, my private life, the more people, sadly, <clears throat> use it to attack me. But what I will say is this. I did some spring cleaning. All right, cleaned up the house a lot. Um, did a lot of outdoor work outside <clears throat> in regards to the backyard, which is why I'm sunburned. Um, I put on tons of sunblock and it's funny cause I put it everywhere. I put on my arms, my neck, uh, shoulder, you know, shoulders that are, that are, you know, exposed to the sun, my face and my ears. My ears typically are what burn the worst. And surprisingly enough, my ears and my face and my arms didn't burn at all. Only the edges of my neck. And they itch and they're bothering me. And it sucks because I had full sunblock on them. But what probably happened is the edges of my t-shirt rubbed the sunblock off. So it is what it is, I guess. You know, not much you could do about that. <clears throat> so did a lot of stuff. All right. And, you know, had some good time with, with uh, Kat. We went uh, went out for, for you know, to eat, get, eat a few times. And did a few fun things. Although that most of them were just, you know... Very basic local things. Uh, but I kind of... I'll, I'll be honest with you guys. I was very much enjoying having the time off. But at the same time, the, the fact that I was doing work during the time off kind of sucked. Like, now I'm all sore. Like, no lie, my legs are sore. My back is sore. I'm sunburnt. And I'm kind of like, man, you know, I really kind of wish I just took the time to relax. This is really what I needed. <clears throat> but I kind of said, well, I haven't, you know, there's these things I want to do around the house with Kat. And we haven't had a chance. So let's get these done now. And I did them, and sadly, now I'm kind of regretting it. I'm like, man, I think it would have been a better deal if I had just kind of rested or recuperated over that time, right? Um, <clears throat> so it is what it is. It is what it is, guys. Um, I, I, You know, the time away was good. Uh, I'm back now, and I'm back full-time. And, by the way, I'll be back working here uh, starting today. All the way through, let's see here, all the way through Saturday the 26th, all right? Now, it's not clear because we don't have Kat's schedule fully, uh, like, fleshed out for the rest of the month. But it's looking like I'll at least be working now until through, say, the 26th. The 26th potentially maybe my next day off. So that means constant gameplay. Boom, boom, boom. New games every day. And don't worry, I'm about to go through the schedule. And let you guys know exactly what you guys can expect, um, you know, over the next several weeks. Because we've got a bajillion new games coming out to cover a lot of fun stuff. 
I hope you guys are excited for all the new content. It's going to be great, all right? <clears throat> Should be pretty good. Um, so, all that being said, guys, as you can see with the stream stats that we've got at the top of the stream, exactly what I told you guys would happen during the downtime has happened. We dipped a significant amount of subs. I believe when, when I went on time away, I believe we we're up to almost 440 subs. And now we're down to 410. So, there you go. And by the way, I don't think that it's over. I do I suspect that we're going to have another dip. All right. Um, I don't know if the person who came in last month and gifted a ton of subs, if those subs have expired yet. I think they did, but I could be mistaken. Okay. Um, so, we'll see. You know, we'll see how it goes. But, uh, you know, exactly what I expected. Now, we've got between now and the end of the month... To work on hitting the subs goal of 475 subs and getting that Street Fighter Challenge run happening. Uh, you guys know about it already if, if you're a regular. If we hit 475 subs, I'm going to play all the different arcade-style modes on the hardest difficulty in the upcoming Street Fighter Anniversary Collection. It's going to be a crazy challenge run marathon-style stream. <clears throat> It'll be the first time I'm ever doing anything like that, so it could be very unique, exciting, and... If people like the event, it may spurn future events where I do the similar things in other games, other kinds of challenge runs, all right? Um, with that being said, we are a far cry from hitting the subs goal now because of the amazing amount of dip that we had when I wasn't here, which I knew was going to happen, all right? So, please consider subscribing to the channel, getting access to emotes, fun emotes, getting access to the chat crown badge, and also, not having to watch advertisements when I run them a couple times, you know, every stream. All right. Fair enough. Now, guys, let's go through the schedule. I want you guys to know what to expect uh, here on Twitch. As long as I am able to stream on Twitch. All right? And what I mean by that is, obviously, if something happens and I'm, you know, suspended or prevented from streaming on Twitch, obviously, this schedule will be suspended. And at that time, I will have to think about what I want to do moving forward. All right? Whether it's just playing games offline or the like, you know, without streaming or the like, I'll let you guys know. Right now, I have, you know, heard nothing, but at the same time, you never know. You guys remember, uh, it was months ago, a couple months ago, we were right in the middle of a stream and pfft, the stream just crapped out on us. <clears throat> and uh, that's really sucked. That really did suck. Um, Someone says, it sounds like I'm talking on an intercom. Does anyone think that I, I'm sounding weird or I'm not sounding normal? Because I have not touched my microphone settings. Nothing, you know. What's going on here? Do I sound okay? You sound, I sound the same? Everyone says I sound the same. So, Super Wombat sounds to me like something's wrong with your settings, not mine. Perhaps it's your internet. I know that when the internet is, uh, like, chopping up, sometimes audio quality can dip dramatically. It sounds like maybe that's what's happening on your end, okay? But anyway, thank you for letting me know, all right? Thank you for letting me know so that, at least, you know, if there was a potential problem, we could identify it, all right? <clears throat> all right, um, so, again, this schedule is pending the fact that I'm able to continue streaming on Twitch. If I'm not able to continue streaming on Twitch, I'm still going to be playing the following games that I'm about to mention. All right. Um, but I obviously, guys, have no control over this kind of stuff. At any moment, anything can happen, as you guys have seen in the past. So I guess we'll find out what happens, all right? I'm hoping for the best. I'm hoping now that we're, I'm back from time off, new games you know, are, are starting up. You know, want to do constant fun gameplay streams for you guys, covering all the, the latest stuff. But it is what it is. It's life, right? So we'll see what happens together. Sound good? Okay. So let's talk. Today, Dead Space, the severed DLC for Dead Space 2. I'm going to be playing on the hardest difficulty, Zealot. Okay? Just like I did the campaign of Dead Space 2. Now, I thought that this camp, this DLC was about three to five hours long. Um, sadly, I think what I'm thinking of is a completely separate DLC. I do. I think I'm remembering something completely different. Um, keep in mind, it's been seven years since I played the damn thing, so my memory's not exactly the best. Um, because this morning, I, well, first of all, I bought the DLC last night, installed it, okay, <clears throat> and it was $7 plus tax, so I'm like, wow, that's kind of pricey, you know, the full game was 20 so for a $7, you would think the game would have a chunk of gameplay in it, 
for that amount of pricing, right? <clears throat> However, sadly, sadly, I hate to say this, um, apparently the, it's only 90, uh, 90 minutes long or, or, you know, maybe two up to two hours, depending on, uh, you know, depending on you know, how you play it. And okay, I'm doing Zealot difficulty. I'm probably going to die a lot. Let's face it. Just like I did in the original campaign. Okay. So all that being said, I don't know how long this, this is going to last. So here's the deal. Let's say I finish this really early, which it seems like there's potential I might, okay? Then I'll talk to you guys in stream chat, and we'll decide what else you guys want me to do. Sadly, I, I wasn't really ready for this. Obviously, I've been on time away, and I didn't expect this. So I don't really have anything else lined up. <clears throat> the, mo the most that I can really do um, is, is really just switch over to either PUBG or Ultra Street Fighter 2. PUBG, however, I don't know if we want to do that. Reason being, I'm already playing that as my second stream tonight. That's what my second stream is at 6.15 p.m. Pacific Time. So now you're talking, you know, an insane amount of PUBG in one day might not work. Okay. <clears throat> so maybe what we should do is just switch over to, to do some Street Fighter 2 quickly. And play that for a couple hours or whatever until the stream ends. And then tonight do PUBG. I think that's probably the best course of action. I apologize to those who are looking for a full stream of Dead Space 2. There's really nothing else to do. I've already beat the game, and, you know, now we're going to do the DLC, and that's it. I had no idea the DLC was this short. <clears throat> okay. Um, so, all that being said, that's the deal for today. Dead Space 2, the severed DLC, if we finish it early, which it looks like we will be doing, probably switching over to some impromptu Street Fighter 2, and then tonight will be PUBG. Okay. Uh, tomorrow... The premiere of State of Decay 2. And yes, I am well aware of what's going on in the media. Everyone is saying the game is being ripped apart. Um, I read a couple reviews this morning myself because I was curious. Uh, one review says the game is still fun. If you liked the first game, you'll definitely like the game. But basically, they really didn't improve much. Like It's kind of a bigger version of the original game. I think they're saying there's three separate maps now. Instead of just like one big one, there's like three completely separate maps to the game for the various parts of the game um and there are some gameplay refinements and new enemy types however for the most part it's basically kind of state of decay 1.57 or something you know what i mean like 1.75 with uh, with basically the same bugs from the first game if you guys remember state of decay 1 was very buggy but it was also an xbox arcade live title so it wasn't a game that many people were expecting much from so you know when the game crashed and the physics wonked out or whatever you had a good laugh at it and then you moved on Apparently, in the modern era, people don't much like that anymore. So, I was, you know, reading these reviews, and they're like, um, you know, the pro you know problem, because the game crashed here, and the UI disappeared, and the camera froze, and I drove off into the, drove off into the sunset on screen, <laughs> and couldn't see where I was, because the game's camera locked up, you know. Sounds like there's a lot of technical issues with the game, um, which, with sadly, you know... Is gonna, you know, what, what are you gonna? Is it gonna hamper the game? It might. Is it gonna be hilarious to see? It also might. Okay. Uh, when I played State of Decay in 2013, I loved it. Um, even though it had a lot of shortcomings, which I openly admitted, I, I definitely enjoyed the game a ton. Um, so I am looking forward to it tomorrow. And you might say, well, why are you playing it tomorrow instead of next week? Well, it's because we got so many new releases coming out next week. I want to be sure that we're giving everything enough time. And I, I'm very nervous that if I don't get State of Decay early, you know, pay the extra little bit of money to get it early, that I won't have enough time to get through it uh, with sufficient time. Keep in mind, I'm going to be not only playing the campaign, but trying to recruit survivors, taking over bases, you know, all the things you did in the original game. Plus, keep in mind, guys, you know, as long as I'm able to continue streaming here, streaming is very interactive. And I get to talk with you guys and react to things and everything, you know, all the time. And it makes it a lot more interesting. You know, I think the original game was fun. Because if you guys remember, it was when I just started streaming. And yes, I did interact with you guys, but it was on a limited basis. Now, I'm going to be interacting with you a hell of a lot more. I think potentially a game like State of Decay, all right, uh, on stream, seems to make mu much more sense. You know, people can react to everything going on in the game. If there's a bug, if there's, you know, taking over a base, or, gee, should I take this, should I swap to this survivor, or stay as this survivor, should I level up this survivor? You can get that kind of interactivity with your viewing audience and kind of almost play the game 
uh, together. All right, versus, you know, just playing it solo, which really is what I used to do. And, you know, it, it was a very different experience. Let's put it that way, okay? I think, I think as a game that you're going to play by yourself without streaming interaction, it could be a lot more boring, but it seems to me like if you can stream the game, it seems to be a much better game. Like, at least that's how, I, that's the impression I remember from playing the original game. I think it's going to be a fun time for, for all of us hanging out here, all right? Again, as long as I can keep streaming, I think it's going to be a really good time, all right? So, that's tomorrow, okay? Tomorrow, I'm starting State of Decay 2. That's going to be my main gameplay stream tomorrow, <clears throat> And then tomorrow night, uh, what do you call it? Um, uh, fuck. Friday night. But I can't even, see, I'm, I'm all thrown off. I don't even know what day of the week it is anymore because I had three days away from streaming. I'm not used to it. <laughs> I'm not used to it, whatever, you know. All right, so anyway, um, tomorrow night, PUBG, all right. And that PUBG, boy, I am so disheveled. Let's start over. Holy crap. Today. Dead Space 2 Severed DLC, probably followed by some Street Fighter 2, and tonight PUBG. Tomorrow, the premiere of State of Decay 2, followed by Yakuza 6. Yes, my Yakuza 6 playthrough will resume tomorrow night. It's funny because uh, actually a few people have been messaging me, <clears throat> asking me, Oh, Phil, I'm finally, I'm starting to watch your Yakuza 6 playthrough now. When are you playing it next? I'm telling, well, sorry, I just so happens that you messaged me when I'm on time away, but I'm coming back, uh, you know, this week. And uh, tomorrow night, Friday night, <clears throat> okay? All right, Saturday, it's going to be more State of Decay 2. And Saturday night is completely up in the air. Reason being, I thought Saturday night I'd be playing uh, more Severed DLC because I thought the DLC was three to five hours long. I was gravely mistaken, apparently. So right now, Saturday night is completely open. Maybe it'll be more State of Decay 2, okay? Or... Maybe I'll do PUBG, or maybe I'll do Street Fighter. You know, I have an opportunity to squeeze something in there, depending on how things go. All right. Sunday will be State of Decay 2. All right. And then Monday will probably be my final major Ultra Street Fighter 2 stream ever. Or it might be Sunday. I have to decide. It's either going to be Sunday or Monday. Because the Street Fighter 30th Anniversary Collection, guys, is coming out very, very soon. All right. It's coming out actually on the 29th. Of May, which is a week from Tuesday. So that being said, um, I definitely want to play it. I'm going to be playing it. And that's going to be the end of Ultra Street Fighter 2. So I want to do one major final session of the game. Give it a last hurrah. So that's either going to be Sunday or Monday. I'm undecided. And then when I don't play on Sunday or Monday, all right, will end up being the major stream for that day. So whether it's Ultra Street Fighter 2 or Straight Into K2. Monday night will probably be more Yakuza 6. Okay. <clears throat> And then Tuesday is the premiere of H1Z1. Now, for those of you who don't know what H1Z1 is, because you may not know what the heck the game is, all right? Um, H1Z1 is a game that was based off of a game called DayZ, I believe, and eventually had other games spawn from it, including PUBG. So it's basically one of these Battle Royale survival-style games, but it's a game that is not basically like the most modernized version. Apparently the game had zombies in it from what I'm to understand. And it was very, very popular on PC for a long time until kind of PUBG came out and took up the reins. All right. Um, <clears throat> so I am going to be trying out H1Z1 this next week. Will it be the major focus and I'm playing it all week? No, 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 no. I think some people were very concerned about that. They were like, Phil, H1Z1 is trash. No one likes it anymore on PC. Why are you going to play it? Just skip it. No, understand, I'm not going crazy with this game. I'm not going to be playing it constantly, nonstop or anything. But I am going to at least be checking it out for, you know, a couple sessions to at least see what it was. I mean, it's the predecessor of a game that I've been playing since, you know, ever since it came out in December. And I still actively play it on and off to this day. <clears throat> so, see what I mean? Um, I'd rather check this out at least... For experimentation purposes. And you know what? If I play it and I don't like it and people don't like it and they're like, nah, you know, a good experiment, but whatever. That's fine. You know, no skin off anyone's back, but at least I'm giving it a shot versus just skip the whole thing entirely. You know, that's the attitude I used to have. I used to be like, man, there was this thing that was popular. And I don't I don't buy into those virally popular games. I'm just going to skip it no matter what, you know. And that was kind of a stupid attitude because at least if I'm trying the game, I can understand 
why it was popular. Perfect example of that is Minecraft. You know, that was a game that for years I very, very ignorantly stayed away from. <clears throat> I insulted people who played it. And then finally I played it. I was like, you know what? Even though I'm not in love with this game, I kind of understand why people would like it. It's addictive. It can be fun if you do various things. You know, you're really getting into the building aspect or the exploration aspect. I can get it. It's not my cup of tea. It's not a game I want to play at length. But at the same time, it's a game that I kind of understand because I gave it a shot. You know? And the same thing, you know, PUBG, Fortnite, these are all games that if I, I understand why people like them. I'm not massively in love with them. But I can understand why people would get addicted and want to play them. So that's why I kind of the same attitude I want to take with H1Z1 next week, okay? So I'll be balancing H1Z1, Yakuza 6, and State of Decay 2 until the end of next week when Detroit Become Human is coming out on Friday the 25th. I'll be playing that on launch day. And then, of course, as we all know, as I already mentioned, on the 29th, you got the Street Fighter 30th Anniversary Collection, which I'm going to be doing an incredible amount of coverage and content of. Originally, I'll be playing this on the PS4, however... Uh, someone has offered to give me a code for the Xbox One, and I was like, dude, if you would give me a code, I will wholeheartedly accept it, because I am fully aware that I have a large viewer base, and a lot of them play games on the Xbox One, and may want to play against me. Alright. Um, and so, you know, there you go. That's gonna be a lot of fun. And then, of course, we can talk about June as we get closer to it. You got games like Vampire and Shaq Fu, and we got E3 coverage coming up. We got a lot of stuff happening soon. All right, so we'll play it by ear. Let's see how it goes. But I'm, I'm happy to be back. I'm happy to be back from, from break. And I hope you guys are excited. Again, you know, that's the rough schedule for the next few weeks as long as, you know, I'm able to broadcast here on Twitch. If something happens and I'm not, I'll let you guys know. We'll talk it out together, you know, and try to figure out what the hell to do. <clears throat> I'm not going to stop covering games at all. You know, whether it means I just cover on YouTube or whatever, we'll find out, all right? We got to just think about it before... You know, hopefully, best case scenario, nothing happens and we're, we're able to just keep moving forward positively and having fun here on streams. As you guys know, the streams are usually great. The streams are a fun, positive place, right? All right. Um, outside of that, I'm trying to think if there's anything else that I want to cover before we get to, you know, plug shoutouts. Oh, there's a couple quick things. Number one, you guys may not know this, but the United States... House of Representatives, excuse me, I screwed that up, the United States Senate um, voted on saving net neutrality over the time that I was on break. Now, the good news is that's great. It means that we've got a lot of lawmakers in the United States to understand that net neutrality is important, and the fact that the Federal Communications Commission wants to get rid of it and is actively going to get rid of it soon um, is a terrible thing, and, you know, it's just really stupid that our government kind of kowtows to companies like, you know, major broadband providers and the like. Uh, you know, in my opinion, we need net neutrality. I talked about this back in the fall during a podcast. I am a very staunch supporter of net neutrality, okay? However, just so you guys know, it probably doesn't mean net neutrality is going to get saved. I think a lot of people kind of over-celebrated, um, you know. <clears throat> so that being said, guys... um. You know, even though the the Congress, I said Congress, the Senate is trying to save net neutrality. All right, it doesn't look like it's going to be saved, um, because sadly, what's going to happen is what they tried to do is pass like a lawmaking measure to save it. But more than likely, what everyone expects is number one, you know, when it goes to the other body of our United States government, all right, the Congress, that they're not going to pass it, and number two. They don't think that President Trump would ever pass it. So even though it was like limited good news that we do have some lawmakers who, who like net neutrality and want to preserve it, more than likely it's going to go away anyway. So just so you guys know, that's real talk. Um, it is what it is. We'll see what happens once net neutrality is gone. Will we actually see concrete changes or is it just a big, one of those big things where you get a bunch of panic and then it doesn't really happen? I don't know. I mean, it could go either way. <clears throat> so I guess we'll find out. Okay, I guess we'll find out. <laughs> All right, uh, the other thing that was a big piece of gaming news is that this was just big news that, that was released last night. Microsoft has secretly been working on a gamepad that is accessible to those with mobility uh, limitations, you know, if they're physically handicapped or, or the like. Um, 
and no one really knew about this until they finally announced it and released all this information. And people were looking at it like, this is crazy. It's a big-ass gamepad, okay? It's got multiple, like, touchpad sensors. It doesn't have a traditional thumbstick, but it has, like, a ridiculous amount of ports to plug in accessories. So, for example, let's say someone, you know, is partially paralyzed and, you know, they use a chair to move around. Well, some of these people use, like, a, a, a toggle with their mouth to blow. They blow into a tube or maybe they use their mouth to move something around. So they're going to be able to get an accessory for this controller, plug it in, and play games with the thing that they already used to get around. All right? That's pretty interesting to me. Like, it, you know, I, it needs to be said, video games are great. Video games are the biggest, most profitable form of entertainment on the planet Earth. And we all know that, right? We all know that for the past several years um, that they are more profitable than movies, TV, music, everything, okay? And, you know, that being said, uh, you know, there's a, a large group of people who enjoy them, but it's always been a very daunting challenge for those who are handicapped to enjoy video games the ways others do because of the traditional style controls that we all use. You know, for you and I, who may not have a handicap, to pick up a controller with dual thumbsticks and all these buttons on the and triggers on the and then there's buttons on the face, there's a touchpad, there's a D-pad. For us, we're like, oh, this is child's play, right? But for someone with a, a disability, it could be incredibly daunting. I used to know a guy who only had one hand. Okay? He only had one hand. His other hand was, I don't know if he got into an accident when he was a kid or whatever. But he basically he was missing a hand. And he was play a Street Fighter player. And he never could play at, like, a high, high competitive level, but he learned a way to play on traditional arcade controls using a joystick. He would use his hand on the joystick and basically found a way to, like, push multiple buttons at the, at the ones with his arm that didn't have a hand. And it took a while, but it was pretty crazy that this guy, you know, was able to, to adapt and play games and still enjoy them. And, you know, everyone respected that guy because he would go out to tournaments and we were like, dude, this guy is awesome, that he's he loves these games, his passion, he's not going to be held back by physical limitations, right? So finally, Microsoft has, has, has developed this, this new controller that's going to have all this adaptivity so people are going to be able to enjoy games regardless of any kind of physical limitation. And I 1 billion percent applaud that and support that. I do. I, for the longest time, have known... <clears throat> that uh, my viewership on YouTube is a wide variety of people from all over the world, okay? And a lot of people over the years have told me, you know, that they have physical limitations. And I know personally a few people who, you know, I've had fun, you know, relationships with and, and you know, getting to know them uh, and, and knowing what they do in their life. And, you know, it it's, can be very tough when you get games that aren't accessible. You know, this is a game that everyone's a triple-A game. Everyone wants to play it. Well, this person can't play it because, you know, they can't, they can't move the way normal people can. They can't lift the controller. Or, you know, for some people, uh, you know, visibility is an issue. Hearing is an issue, right? If you can't hear the game, sometimes you can't react. If you can't see what's on the screen, you can't react. So there's a lot of things that, you know, got to come into play when it comes to game design that a lot of people don't really think about. You know, you and I, again, if we don't, if you don't have a disability, you may not think about that. It's not a concern to you, but it's a big, huge concern to other people. And, you know, it's awesome that Microsoft actually went out of their way to think about this and develop this awesome controller. Look on the internet, you'll find tons of information about it, because it was all the information came out last night about it. And I read the article, I was like, wow, this is like really cool. And I certainly hope that uh you know that that this thing first of all, the, the one concern that I have about it, because I didn't see any information about this in the article, how much does it cost? You know what I mean? Because wow, this is a great controller. I hope it doesn't cost like five hundred dollars. I mean, that would be insane. So I hope this accessible controller ends up being reasonably priced and that, you know, maybe, you know, the attachments, that'll be interesting to see what attachments will be available um, or, or will be developed because what they're expecting is that third party companies will start developing these attachments for it to make it accessible to people of various different levels of mobility and the like. So <clears throat> I guess we'll find out. Like I said, again, you know, look it up and, uh, you know, look it up, and uh, there you go. Enjoy. And now a troll's being banned for being actually being completely insensitive to people who have, uh, you know, mobility limitations. What a jerk. Wow, what a great place to do that. You're a, you are a complete jerk, and you have just proved it on the stream. <laughs> wow. All righty then. <clears throat> okay, Um, let's very quickly... 
do some shout outs to everyone or to shout outs to everyone. Hold on. Let's very quickly do some uh, plugs and then we'll get to the shout outs. Okay, guys. All right. So real quick, guys, outside of watching my live streams and or watching my videos on YouTube, which, by the way, thank you for 10 years of support doing that. I really do appreciate you guys and how supportive you are. All right. The fact that I'm here is just because of your support for a decade and, and greater. Right. Um, outside of just watching everything, there's a few ways that you can contribute, uh, you know, to go above and beyond if you so would like. If you enjoy my daily live streams and <clears throat> daily on demand videos and everything that I do, the coverage of all the games that I play, you want to see that continue. A few things you could check out to help out. First of all, my Patreon at patreon.com forward slash dark side Phil. All right. Anything that you contribute there is greatly appreciated. And by contributing to my Patreon, you earn personal perks. For example, so some ideas of some of the perks you can earn via your contributions. You can get premium forum access. You can nominate and vote on games uh, for upcoming events. Right now, people are nominating on games for the upcoming Patrons' Choice playthrough. And by the way, real quick, there are a few patrons who did not get upgraded. Um, and I'm working on that. I found out about that after my time off last night. I was like, oh, crap. So I'm working with my webmaster to get you guys upgraded. My bad if you didn't yet. But don't worry. The nominations process is still live and going for a while here, at least another week, okay? Um, also, you can get your questions answered on my bi-monthly uh, show, Ask the King, which is my uh, Q&A show. Or you can get a private Q&A video made. You can ask me all kinds of questions and get a video made for yourself. Whatever you want. You know, cool stuff. Give it a look over at patreon.com forward slash dark side Phil. Your contributions really help. And thank you to everyone who does contribute. And thanks to anyone who may actually be looking forward. Um, you know, look, looking forward to contributing in the future. All right, that's number one. Number two, my Teespring shop. Merchandise, including t-shirts, sweatshirts, hoodies, stickers, and mugs. Great quality stuff. I can personally attest to it because I own a bunch of it myself. Um, all logos and artwork designed by viewers and fans. Um, give it a look, right? If you buy anything from the shop, I get a commission. Helps me out. You get a cool collectible, so it's a win-win for both of us. Check it out at teespring.com forward slash stores forward slash DSP gaming. There you go, guys. All right, now, if you guys are watching here on the stream and you are enjoying the stream and you're having a lot of fun and you want to get in on the action, maybe get a live shout out during the stream, there's three ways you could do that. You can either cheer with bits, you can subscribe to the channel, or you could tip me. All right, doing any of those three things will earn you a shout out during the stream. However, Keep in mind, it is very subjective, meaning there are some rules that you need to follow, and I'm not, by default, just going to read anything. All right, number one, please keep everything concise, meaning if you're going to try to get a shout-out, do not please use a ginormous paragraph, a ridiculous amount of sentences. Uh, you know, the shorter, the better. I don't want to derail the entirety of the stream to answer one cheer. Um, see what I mean? And I don't think anyone wants the whole stream held up for 25 minutes for me to read and answer a giant question. I do have a bi-monthly Q&A show. I do, you do have the opportunity to try to get uh, a, you know, your question answered, like I said, via Patreon, stuff like that. There's other methods you could do. Uh, you know, the shout outs during the stream are pretty much to be brief, brief and, and you know, and fun. Number two, uh, please try to stay positive. And what I mean by that is if you want a shout out, right? You want to, you want to have me respond, please, no insults. Please, don't bring up other people who are doing negative stuff. Please do not, you know, bring in drama to the stream. This is not the place for it. Please, God, we've all had enough drama this week. We don't need any more, okay? <laughs> and I wholeheartedly have apologized for that, and I apologize again. Sometimes people are stupid. I'm not, uh, I'm certainly not immune to that. And sometimes my stupidity causes unneeded drama. I want to keep that off the streams as much as possible, all right? So, please, no ridiculous questions, no drama. Keep it off the streams. That's where it belongs. We don't need it here. We're here to have fun, to watch fun gameplay, to have positive interactions. That's the deal. Okay, guys? The bottom line is the vast majority of people, all right, the vast majority of people who watch my streams, number one, get it, and number two, have a great time. Okay? I'd say probably about 95% of people who try to get shout-outs during the streams you know, get it, and the streams end up being very positive overall, okay, um, so thank you to those of you who do support, thanks to those who get it, and, uh, you know, it is what it is, they're always gonna have the bad apples, but, you know, for the most part, the streams have been really great, especially recently, I would say, okay, 
<clears throat> now, the other cool thing here, as you guys can see, we have a leaderboard on the top of the screen. And I'm going to be updating that during the stream. So those who are cheering, subbing, and tipping, you guys are going to get up on the leaderboard. And by the way, once I start doing shoutouts in just a moment, I will begin to update the leaderboard. All right. <clears throat> so it will be uh, updated, you know, in a few minutes and then, you know, periodically during the course of the stream for people who maybe get the top cheer or the top tip. All right, you're going to get up there on the leaderboard, which will be pretty cool. Sound good? Of course, the, the subs as well. Already we got a few subs on stream, and I'll, I will check before the pre-stream ends to see if we need to update that total. Okay? <clears throat> All right. Now, maybe you guys also would like to get an on-screen animation for your contributions. You could do that as well. You need to either cheer 50 bits or more, subscribe to the channel, and hang out for a little bit. After a few minutes, a uh, share button will appear. Click on that share button. Or tip me five bucks or more. If you do any of those things, you'll get an on-screen thank you notification that will pop up. It's really cool, and it's a way for you to get both visual and verbal recognition for any, you know, contribution that you may do during the stream. So, there you go, okay? <clears throat> All right, I think it's time for shout-outs, guys. Are you guys ready? All right, let's uh, go ahead. So, first of all, let me scroll all the way down because even during the time when I was not here, we had a group of people who were contributing, uh, and I am very appreciative of that. So, shout out to the following people who, during my time away, all right, contributed in various methods. Let's, let's give them their credit where credit is due. We have Punisher6574, who cheered 50 bits. He said, in our modern digital age, do you feel that constant trolling is worse and more impactful than a direct threat against somebody? Well, here's the thing. It depends on what you mean, all right? So, allow me to give you an example. If someone just comes up to you and says, oh, you're, a, you're an asshole or whatever to your face, that could be considered a threat or an insult. It's just words. Someone coming up to you physically saying, I'm going to fuck you up, I'm going to fight you, I'm going to beat you, I'm going to break your bones, or hell, someone actually coming after you trying to hurt you, right? Obviously, that's far more <clears throat> dangerous in the immediate sense than ongoing trolling. However, you are correct to say in the modern digital age, ongoing trolling especially when taken too far, for example, swatting, DDoS attacks, things that could be considered illegal, because they are, but because you're anonymous when you do these things, chances of being caught are incredibly slim, okay? These can all be incredibly hurtful to a business. <clears throat> Personally, I've been the subject of all these attacks. In particular, if you want to talk financially, the biggest impact hit that I ever took was in 2015, when false copyright strikes were put against my YouTube channel, DSP Gaming, all right, and because I had to remove every video ever that had fan art used in it for fear that all these copyright strikes could come through an automated system, um, and by the way, I was instructed to do this by my partner manager company as well as directly by YouTube at the time. I was told this is the only way to avoid having DSP Gaming shut down erroneously. Um, my YouTube channel, DSP Gaming, lost millions of views because I had to delete two to three years of pre-stream videos, okay, and when I did that, the viewership dropped so much that YouTube's, again, automated system said, well, your channel, if, if you're deleting that many videos, something's obviously wrong. You're in the wrong. And it basically destroyed my channel in search rankings. And to this day, you know, DSP Gaming is a shell of what it was. I can't get those outside viewers who normally during, say, the hardcore gaming season, you know, the fall, the end of the year, would come in and start searching for new games. I want to see... Red Dead Redemption 2, and they'd search for it, and I would be on the on the first or second page of people playing the game. Now I'm on, like, page 17, you know? And it sucks, because, you know, I was one of the longest-running YouTube channels for gaming. <clears throat> and that, that what you consider, oh, it's just innocent trolling, false copyright strikes. No, false copyright strikes are actually are breaking the law, okay? They are 100% illegal. If the people who did those lived in the United States and were identified, they could be arrested, Okay. And the bottom line is, it concretely hurt me. It made it so that, sadly, just doing YouTube for a living wasn't viable anymore. I had to find, try to find other ways to balance my income, like Patreon and then eventually live streaming. You know, at one point, just doing the DSP Gaming channel was fine. And then when I lost all that viewership because my channel didn't show up in search anymore, I had to go through other desperate measures to make ends meet and pay my bills. And it sucks. Because ever since then, people have said, oh, Phil, you got to do advertisement or whatever. Dude, why do you think I have to do it? You notice before then, I wasn't doing constant advertisement. I wasn't doing, you know, anything like accepting tips and stuff like that. None of that existed until that happened. And it sucks, but that's just reality, right? So there's a concrete example where the online trolling 
hurt me huge. Was it a physical threat where someone said, I'm going to come kill you or stab you? No. But it's something that's hurt me and is never the impact of it has never gone away and I've never recovered from it. You know, and I'm never going to be back at that level. I'm not. DSP Gaming will never, ever get back to the level it once was because of the actions of these few trolls. So, yes, in the modern digital age, constant trolling can actually end up being worse overall than just a physical threat. There you go. That's the, that's the, the God's honest answer. <clears throat> All right. Shout out to Golden Colts, who did a few cheers. All right. We've got Golden Colts who did a 75-bit and then a 25-bit cheer. Thank you, Golden Colts. Tandem Honor did a 50-bit cheer. Thank you, Tandem Honor. Your boy Bob resubbed for the 17th month in a row. Thank you very much, your boy Bob. Um, I gone fishing. Did a 200-bit cheer and asked to ban someone in the stream chat. I'm not seeing them. So, unless they come back and start doing trolling today, no, I'm not just going to ban someone willy-nilly. But thank you for the cheer. I appreciate that. Lincoln Simpson did a cheer. He said, everything will be okay, fella. Don't worry. You know, I hope so. Like I said, st sadly, I am an idiot sometimes. And I make really ridiculously stupid mistakes. Uh, like any human, sadly, my mistakes are broadcast to a worldwide audience, even though I don't have a worldwide giant, you know, audience of people who watch my streams or videos on YouTube anymore, really. Let's be, be real here. Yes, do I have a lot of people who watch? Yes. Anywhere near what it used to be? No. But I get, I get the negativity coverage. If I do something nice or positive, no one cares. But if I do something you know, stupid, boneheaded, terrible, or dumb, immediately the entire internet knows, <laughs> you know? And it sucks because then it's like, all right, now we got to deal with days of crap until we can finally get back to business as usual and normal life, you know? Luckily, I'm hope like I said, I'm hoping everything will go smoothly here. We'll be able to just come back positively from this time away and, you know, just be normal. As you guys know, the streams have been fun and great recently. There's been no kind of but negative shit or anything on the streams, and I want to keep it that way. But, you know, it is what it is. If if I lose my ability to stream, it is what it is, guys. You know, I how much I could do about it. I mean, I'll be real with you. Yes, I'm worried about it. Obviously, it's a huge thing. It's a big part of my income. I make more money on Twitch than I do on YouTube, so if I can't stream on Twitch, that's pretty much a huge blow, and I don't know how I'm going to pay my bills. Real talk. Uh, you know, it could be hugely crippling to the point where that's it. Then I have to decide what I'm going to do when it comes to moving forward because I can't do this anymore. You know, I don't know. It's going to be terrible. So we'll see what happens. I hope nothing happens. I have heard nothing to any effect that anything is going to happen. It doesn't mean that it won't because things happen behind the scenes and, you know, it is what it is. But thank you, Lincoln Simpson, for the support. Shout out to Golden Colts again for another cheer. Thank you, Golden Colts, for that cheer. All right. And thank you to Game Master 2003 is dead again for a cheer. So thank you to all you guys again who contributed um, while I was away. I appreciate all your contributions and your support. Thank you guys very much. All right, now let's begin with people who actually cheered, subbed, and tipped uh, via the stream when I actually went live this morning, okay? All right. Here we go. So shout out to the Lolly Cop, who cheers the first year here. I hope the stream will be positive and things will return as normal. It will be by the power of Selson Blue. Thank you, Lolly Cop, and you cheered again. Yeah, it's a good thing you apologized for what you said on Twitter. It's the right mature thing to do, and some people are happy that you did. Others, of course, will still shit on you. People don't understand that you're just human. Now, what it is is this. It's very simple. Um, I'm someone who there has been crazy amounts of negativity about for years, and most people only know about me from the negativity. So when they hear, oh, this guy who's known for these negative things, did something else negative, all, they just shit, 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 and they throw their shit at me, okay? And I get that. Uh, it's just a shame that I've been around for 10 years. There's been how many, you know, crazy positive things that I've done. I'm one of, if not the most prolific gaming YouTuber there is, yet no one knows that. They only know the negative. You know, it sucks. They don't want to hear the positive. They just hear the negative, 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 and that's what they become all about, right? Um... <clears throat> So, you know, it's my. sometimes it's my fault, sometimes it's not. In this particular case, it is my fault. I own up to it. I'm an idiot, and I did something very stupid. I made a dumb tweet, tweet on Twitter. It blew up. It's annoying that it did because, obviously, I read back the tweet hours later. I'm like, I didn't mean to fucking say it like that. That's, just reading it back, I'm like, that is stupid. That is not even close to the, the message that I wanted to portray. You know, so it is what it is. You know, you got to live it. You got to live with your responsibility for stupid shit you do 
at least, you know, I was able to go out there and say, you know what, I didn't mean to say it like that. That's definitely not my, my overall feeling about anything. Um, but it is what it is, right? All right, King Swaggins resubbed for the fifth month in a row. And he says, in Swaggins, we trust, okay? <clears throat> the Lollicop. Cheered again, he says, this might be a weird question. Do you think you have a good vocabulary? Um, Good vocabulary, okay? Uh, I don't know what that means. Do I have a more diverse vocabulary than the common English-speaking person? Maybe. Um, when I was, you know, in, in school, I went through a lot of higher-level classes, including, you know, uh, British literature and the like, and there's a lot of vocabulary words and things that we learned that are words that I still use today, although I don't hear them used in normal dialect. Um, I'll be honest, the older I get, the dumber I'm probably getting. <laughs> so, yeah, probably a lot of things that I used to say or do, I probably have lost. All right. Um, so there you go. Uh, I don't know. I really, I guess it would be more of a question for you guys, the viewers. Do you guys think that I have a more diverse or a good vocabulary that, you know what I mean? Or do you think that I'm just, I sound normal? I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> All right. Shout out to AES0411, he cheered, he says, they announced Black Ops 4 won't have a campaign, but they'll have a battle royal mode. It's a cash-in. I think everyone knew this, though. Everyone knew, everyone knew this was happening. We heard, you know, the rumors. We pretty much figured it was going to be true. No campaign, battle royal mode. They redesigned the multiplayer to be completely different. It's not going to have the double, crazy double jump, triple jump wall running. Instead, it's going to have classes, kind of like Overwatch or Team Fortress. You know, they're changing the game up to be a different formula so that you're going to justify, oh, we changed it enough that it's 60 bucks, but there's no campaign. It's going to be ultimately up to us to judge that when the game comes out this fall, okay? I definitely will be checking it out. Uh, I don't know if I'm going to like it or not. The thing is with Treyarch, it's kind of hit or miss. Some of the Treyarch games have been amazing and I love them and some of them are like, whoa, what is this crap? So, I don't know. We're going to all find out, you know? Uh, shout out to Yanni Molmberg. What a name. Took me five bucks. Says, hope you had a great time during your time away. Thank you. I did. Even though, as I've already mentioned on this stream, <clears throat> I wish that I had taken more time to relax. Um, I really do. Uh, I feel that when you're taking time away, it, the primary focus should be relaxation. Instead, what I basically did was worked or did a lot of physical activity that... Uh, what the fuck did I do here? Is that correct? No, there's two L's. Where'd the other L come from? There we go. Okay. Oh, good Lord. <clears throat> All right, anyway. Um, yeah, so there you go. Thank you for the tip. And uh, I just wish that I'd taken more time to relax. And the bottom line is probably the next time that I will relax or have time away from constant you know, coverage of games and work will more than likely be right before the hardcore gaming season starts. <clears throat> so that could potentially be either, you know, August or September, because we don't know exactly what games are coming out when yet. We have to wait for E3 to kind of get a better idea. But even when the next time I take, you know, time away from streaming slash making new videos for an extended period of time is, I plan on relaxing, which is what I should have done this whole thing. Spring cleaning, backyard stuff is all well and good, but... When I come back and now I'm sore and I'm feeling beat and tired, not a very good thing. Um, so definitely I will be doing more than that, uh, you know, in the future. But anyway, thank you for the tip. I appreciate that. Thank you very much. All right, Kulu Yaku did a 99-bit cheer. I believe you're actually the top cheerer for today. I should double check here. Let me actually scroll down. I think you're the top cheerer so far. Yes, you are. So I'm going to keep you in mind. I'm not going to put you on the leaderboard yet because I know a lot more people cheered. But Kulu Yaku says, hope we can reach that sub goal. You know, I do too. Reason being, this is a very unique event that I've set up. It's very specific to a time frame, meaning doing the event now during the launch of the Street Fighter Anniversary Collection is going to be a lot more pertinent than say, oh, in two months we do it. Well, the game's already old then, right? Doing it around launch would be a great idea. Like if I could do it in the first two weeks of June would be pretty amazing. Um... But I knew that we were going to lose a ton of subs when I was away. I just knew it. So here we are. Come back. And it's exactly kind of what I expected. I actually expect we're going to lose a lot more, too. I do. Because I think there's a few more that are going to expire. Um, but, guys, if you want to see this special challenge run event, 
please consider subscribing to the channel, okay? Shout out to Vulcan who cheered and said, what's up with that tweet, Phil? I already explained. I'm not going to go on. The, here, here's the, the best explanation I can give you guys, all right? Of why on earth would I have done that stupid tweet? Because I want to get this out of the way so we can just move on. And I have a very matter-of-fact way that I can explain it to all of you. And I know a lot of you on pre-stream, you know, who are sitting here artificially, you know, inflated the stream numbers and everything to hear me talk about this. In a nutshell, here's how I can explain it, all right? It's very simple. I'm stupid to the point where I think that I'm going to tweet something publicly and it's only going to go to my viewers who understand me and the, and the frame of reference and the context, okay? That is incredibly dumb, but for some reason, I keep thinking this. So I'll tweet something that is incredibly, you know, abridged, a, 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 a incredibly not fleshed out, basically just the snippet of a full thought. But I'll tweet that thinking, well, the people who follow me on Twitter know me, they watch my streams, they understand the situation, right? And they're going to get it. They're going to know what I mean. And I tweet that out, and the next thing I know, people are like, what are you talking about? What's this? What's that? I'm like, oh, fuck. I did it again. And this is, it's been a while since I did something stupid like that, okay? In fact, it was hilarious because someone actually quoted, I guess sometime in 2014, when I did exactly the same thing at that time, and I said, man, you know, why am I trying to... To, to relay these kind of these these kind of ideas on Twitter, uh, you know, where there's no way I could flesh it out. This is stupid. And he's like, I guess you didn't learn. You know what? I guess you're right. I guess I'm still stupid. I mean, it's just stupidity. Why am I doing that? You guys here, all right, who are here on the streams, who have been here on the streams, have heard me very, very much in detail flesh out my opinion on early release copies, people getting advanced access, elite selection, preferential treatment to get games early and play them on stream for profit, which is what I was actually referencing in the tweet and did not properly say at all in the tweet, right? Um, you know my opinions. I don't have to go into it because I've talked about it multiple times, all right? But I tweeted in a very, first of all, incorrectly worded. It was incorrectly worded to begin with. And an abridged version of that, basically trying to say, listen, guys, I know there's people who already are playing State of Decay 2 way early before anyone else can even get the game. Um, it's not fair to all of us, right, that these people get preferential treatment and literally are, are, are doing this on Twitch and getting crazy amounts of views because they're playing the game early, right? And we all know it. Um, but I'll be playing it on Friday. I'll be buying the game. And I'll be giving you my honest opinions, which you guys cherish because I buy the games, play them on release date, and I give you my valid and genuine opinions then rather than getting a early copy and now everyone's hype about the game because the game's early and you're seeing it early, right? Um, that's really kind of the full tweet that I wish I could have said. But even then, just saying that, if you don't, again, if you don't know my full opinion on pre-release copies, you still wouldn't understand it. You know, when I was when I was tweeting that, I meant nothing about journalists or anything like that at all. But reading the stupid tweet I put out, that's what it sounded like. It sounds like I was saying journalists who get early copies, you know, are shills. And everyone, you know, it just was a terrible, terrible fucking tweet. It was really stupid. And, you know, the bottom line is, if it were a normal work day, I would have tweeted that. And immediately when I started seeing negative responses, I would have said, oh shit, that's a, why did I tweet that? And I would have deleted it immediately. But it just so happens it was a day that I was off. Right? So I didn't I wasn't checking social media or anything. I wasn't checking Twitter. I wasn't, you know, doing any of that stuff. And then I come back six plus hours later and the internet has exploded on Twitter about this. I'm like, what the holy hell did I do? For I had to go back and read my tweet. I was like, what the fuck did I say here? Boy, this was stupid. <laughs> okay. So, you know, it sucks. It basically sucks that I did it. But what can you, like I said, what can you do? You can't turn time. It was a perfect storm of bullshit. It was me being a moron. It was me doing it, being a moron on a day when I wasn't going to go back to check my moronic mistake and, and get rid of it, you know, before it blew up. Um, on a normal day, it certainly wouldn't have ever blown up. But it was the perfect storm of bullshit. And I, I do want to apologize to any of you, all right, who maybe... Uh, how, you know, we're negatively affected by this, especially if you're a fan of mine. And now for an entire day, if you were following me on Twitter, all you saw was negative shit. I apologize for that. That's my fault. I man up and I fully accept that. 
that tweet was does, was not accurately representative of any of my true opinions on anything. It was poorly worded. It was poorly timed. It was poor. It was stupid. So there you go. I assumed that people who were reading the tweet were basically my my biggest fans. All right, and they were going to be. Uh, understanding because they already knew the full situation they already knew the fact that i had this opinion and they knew uh they knew that uh what my opinion was and all i was trying to do was very briefly reiterate that opinion and say all right guys get hyped because even though the game's basically being spoiled all over the internet already i'll be playing it on friday and instead of doing that i said it in the stupidest possible way and i apologize so there you go Okay. <laughs> what the heck? Oh my god. Pinkdom just said it was an early access tweet. Anyone talking smack about it won't get review copies of Phil's tweets in the future. <laughs> oh my god. <clears throat> okay. Uh, Rave Comic cheer. He says, dude, I love your Yakuza playthroughs. They're amazing and the best. I, I, like, I like Yakuza. I like Yakuza a lot. A lot of my viewers don't. A lot of my viewers say, man, whenever Phil plays Yakuza, I, I back away. Uh, I want nothing to do with it. It's boring. I disagree. I like the Yakuza series, even though I will wholeheartedly admit that the cutscenes can be drone on and be incredibly long, which I think we all agree with. <clears throat> Excuse me. I think we all agree with the fact that the cutscenes, especially in Yakuza 6, some of them have been crazy out of hand. You know, sitting around for 10, 15 minutes uh, before you can play the game again can get overbearing. But in general, I like the Yakuza series. I've got a burp stuck in me right now that's really bothering me because I'm trying to talk. Do you know when you try to talk and a burp is coming up and then it sticks in your your gullet? And you're like, what the fuck is this? That's what's happening to me right now. Anyway, um, I really like the Yakuza series. I enjoy it a lot. I'm looking forward to playing it more tomorrow night and continuing on with Yakuza 6 till I beat it. I'm not giving up on that game. It's going to be a game I balance with everything else, okay? <clears throat> All right. Aussie Sly 47 Adam. Did 100-bit series. It's official. No campaign in Black Ops 4 because of, because of that. I'm not buying the game. You know what, Aussie? Well, first of all, you're the top cheerer for the day, so let me get you up on the leaderboard. But I get the feeling, Aussie, that you are not alone. Oops. <clears throat> I get the feeling that there will be... What the hell did I put here? <laughs> what, am I, what is going on today? Um, There will be a large group of people who normally would buy black ops who are not going to buy it however the question is is this group of people enough to offset the development cost of putting the campaign into the game because when you hear oh they're cutting out a critical part of the game that sounds to me like they're trying to cut costs to keep the franchise alive they realize that sales numbers for call of duty have dipped in the recent years <clears throat> and so if they need to cut costs what's the thing they're going to cut they're going to cut the mode that the least amount of the people who buy the game play right so yes undoubtedly aussie there will be people just like you who are not going to buy black ops 4 however is it enough to offset the fact that the, the, you know they would have put this extra money uh into <clears throat> if they put extra money into the campaign right so i don't know well i guess we'll see we're gonna see when sales numbers come out were they monstrously negatively affected or not uh we'll find out i guess Okay. Wow, that is not centered. There we go. Now it is. The, the uh, leaderboard there. All right, that douche kid. Cheer and said, welcome back. Thank you, that douche kid, for the cheer. Shady Sands 89 cheered 100 bit cheer. So he tied Aussie Sly Adam. I should get him up on the leaderboard then. Hold on here. Hold on. Oh, what am I doing? <laughs> Shady Sands, 89. There we go. So, Shady Sands, 89, said, cheered 100 bits. Thank you for the cheer. He says, have you been told that Twitch are looking into your streaming abilities? I hope everything's okay. He's basically asking, because I've referenced several times on this pre-stream, you know, that my schedule that I'm telling you is only if I can keep streaming. Um, I Listen, I have not been told anything, all right? The bottom line is so many people report me for shit every single day here on Twitch. <clears throat> so many. That, you know, you never know. At any moment, 
I could be hit for I could be hit for something that happened weeks ago. I could be hit for this tweet that happened yes or two days ago. You know, I could be. I thought honestly, I thought you know, the stream would be end up being if it, if it was going to be shut down, it would probably be shut down before we got to today. That you know, if if, if, if this tweet was seen as such an egregious thing that I did, a horrendous, terrible, horrible act from a horrible, terrible man, right? If this really was. That Twitch would have got together and said, all right, let's just, you know, let's shut down the streaming capabilities and that's it for Phil. That hasn't happened yet. I haven't been contacted by them at all. Um, there's been situations where sometimes I thought maybe things would be held against me and they weren't. And of course, sometimes I've been blindsided by things that I, you know, I'm like, wow, really? So I don't know. Like I said, I'm going to just basically pro progress business as usual, be positive on the streams like I always am, you know, and try to have fun with you guys. And whatever happens, happens. I, I have no control over it. I can't affect it at any moment. Guys, if you see the stream stop working, that's probably what happened. You know, I'll let you know if it's an internet blip or if I'm off Twitch. I don't know. And like I said, um, I want to stay here. I love being here. I love being with you guys positively every day. I would hope that one really, really stupid tweet that I made wouldn't, you know, jeopardize and end that capability. But that's life, I guess. It sucks when shit like this happens. Uh, that we're all fallible humans and I make stupid mistakes, you know, and I, again, I've already apologized to you for that. I certainly hope that I don't lose my streaming capabilities here on Twitch uh, again, but it could happen, you know, at any moment's notice, it could be taken away. Same thing with YouTube too, by the way, at any moment's notice, YouTube could just say, well, we've decided that you violate, violate copyright or you've done this. That's not in, ag in agreement with this policy and goodbye and shut down your YouTube channel. It's always been like this in the 10 years that I've done, you know, content creation, this is not anything new. It just sucks that now we're in a position where, you know, my streams are good. People are enjoying them. They're coming out. They're having tons of fun. I've got people who come here and hang out and feel like this is a, a an awesome space, right? Um, it sucks. That that might go away now because of a stupid, a stupid, stupid thing that I did. You know, it is what it is. Uh, Kate cheered and said, "Welcome back, Phil." Also, happy Taco Thursday. Thank you, Kate. Fred Flintstone cheered said, "We are going Duffy." Also, rest in peace, Nessie. I have no idea what you're talking about, but thank you for your cheer. <laughs> I have no idea what that means. Um, Weapon J did a 50-bit cheer and then did a 40-bit cheer. So thank you, Weapon J, for your cheers. I appreciate that. Spawn Killer tipped me a dollar and asked, do you still have your green screen? I do. It is in the garage. Okay. It is in the garage. And it is huge. This is what people don't seem to understand about my green screen. When I bought this green screen, I wanted to be able to do all kinds of projects and stuff with it. Like, I had ideas. Now, keep in mind, this was years ago. I bought the green screen in 2014, and I built it in 2015. Uh, I had all these plans where I, I, I wanted to do a news show, where I would kind of sit in front of a simulated news desk and do gaming news. Um, I had plans to do a skit show where I was going to dress up as Death Face and do, like, gaming skits and parodies based off of silly things that YouTube does. Uh, you know, with their changes to their website and the like, basically a way to kind of give them a rib. Um, I had all these ideas. And then, sadly, they all just fizzled out and died when I got those false copyright strikes in 2015. Because basically it was like, well, any piece of artwork I use in anything I do could have a false copyright strike put against it um, and shut down my channel. And if you guys don't understand what I mean, I had fan art that took Nintendo. So, for example, let's say uh, Metroid Prime. So it took actual, you know, Nintendo-owned artwork of Metroid characters, and people made fan art out of it. They took, you know, okay, they cut out Samus, and it's me standing next to Samus or something like that, okay? That got copyright strikes against it, because they said, oh, I work for Nintendo, and I'm copyright striking this Nintendo artwork, and YouTube's automated system accepted the strike and granted a strike against my channel. That's how dumb YouTube's automated system used to be. It used to be completely broken. Okay, it's different now. Now, it doesn't put up with that shit. It's got people manually reviewing that crap, and 99% of the time, it realizes everything's fake, okay? Um, but back then, it was ridiculous, okay? So, yeah, I have my green screen, but I bought a huge one to do all this fun stuff, and, you know, haven't used it in years. You know, it wasn't until recently that I started bringing back fan art to the streams, uh, because the YouTube system changed, and, you know, the copyright strikes against them don't work anymore, um, I had, I, you know, I have or have plans. Maybe I will use it sometime in the future. Uh, right now, I'm definitely way more focused on just putting out entertaining streams for you guys. 
in which case having a you know the green screen implemented here doesn't really help i by the way I, as i said a million times i'll say it again the green screen does not fit in my office the green screen will not fit in my office no green screen will work in my office with my current setup the way that i'm sitting here on the love seat um number one the love seat is high up enough that the green screen wouldn't be positive to help at all number two i have nowhere to hang it i've got soundproofing foam behind me on the wall and there's no way to attach a screen so it would look flat and tidy and nice for a camera uh especially with the lighting i have in this office there's just no way to do it okay and the negligible benefit of having a green screen wow there's slightly less background on phil's webcam is not worth you know is not worth you know working hours and hours to see if i can get a green screen to finally fucking work most people who have green screens for their webcams on their streams um have a setup where they sit at a computer desk and they sit on an office chair that's easy you can just put up a standard green screen standing behind you and it's really easy to do i don't have that set up i never will therefore that's why i can't do it and honestly as i said many times i don't see the major benefit regardless um you know it just because it's something everyone does doesn't mean it's necessary nor that it adds anything it's just something everyone does to say that they're a professional streamer i've never seen the benefit i mean I know streamers who are professional streamers who don't even have a webcam, so figure that one out. They can do it. Obviously, it's not a big deal, right? All right, shout out to Cool Man 2362 who subscribed to the channel for the 14th month in a row. Thank you, Cool Man, for the ongoing uh, support. Very much appreciate it. Shout out to Omega Man X01 who cheered uh, and said, I. Okay then. Shout out to O One Hit Knockout Three Sixteen. What a name! Who cheered and said huge fan since two thousand eight. Thank you for the cheer. Shout out to Rave Comic, who said C U C K O C U C K O Kaku. Oh, what a wonderful day! I came out as gay. Welcome back, DSP. <laughs> wow, what a message. So I have no idea if that's legit or not. But anyway, thank you, Rave Comic, for the cheer. Maybe you were just trying to get me to say something funny, and I blew it. I don't know. Anyway, shout out to Sadella, who cheered and said, I think gamers from all around the world deserve to play games. We all have problems and challenges, and we're not born being perfect. But we are God's children. Uh, we all have royal blood. Disability, take away the dis, and you get ability. No, I agree that, you know, again, people should all have equal opportunity. Now, obviously, if you have a physical disability, can you get up and immediately become a, you know, professional athlete? Probably not. And I think we all need to know our, our limitations. You know, I'm not exactly the smartest guy on planet Earth. I don't expect that I should be able to immediately become a high-level statistician, mathematician, or rocket science, or scientist, right? But... Video games are meant to be fun. They're meant to be engaging, entertaining experiences that don't require a lot of physical requirements, so we should make them accessible. So there you go. Okay. Um, shout out to King Swaggins. King Swaggins did a 510-bit cheer, and he says... Oh, by the way, that makes him the top cheerer for today, which I just realized. Okay, hold on a second. Let me get him on the leaderboard, and then we'll read his message. And by the way, yes, guys, I am aware that the pre-stream today is incredibly long. Uh, I think we all knew it was going to be. I was gone for the week, you know. This is my first day back, and with all the drama that happened this week, we knew this was going to be a long pre-stream, you know. I think we kind of expected it, so. Thank you for being patient before we begin here today. So, 510-bit cheer for King Swaggins. Thank you, sir. And he says the following. Hold on. He says, uh, We really need to put a stop to those terrible-ass looting simulator games. If devs want to waste their time making a game like that, then, th then it should be free. The shit pisses me off that they have the audacity to ask for money. Why don't devs actually focus on quality projects? There's no reason for State of Decay to have a sequel. Barely anything has changed. I disagree. I liked State of Decay 1, you know. And as I said, I really feel that if you're just going to sit around and play State of Decay 2 by yourself, it may be a dud. But for a game where I'm going to be live streaming and interacting with you guys while I'm doing the looting and the fighting of zombies and the base building and the recruiting and the leveling of characters and the progression of the story. I think it's going to be a lot of fun to do it interactive on a stream. I think that's kind of the kind of game it is. You know what I mean? Some games lend themselves better to one thing than another. There's some games that, honestly, if it's a narrative-based game, probably better without a stream. 
right? Because that way there's no no one distracting you from the narrative or whatever. But a game like State of Decay 2, I think, would be a better streaming game. And that's why I'm looking forward to it, all right? I think there's a place in the industry for various kinds of games. I think the problem is, sadly, the bandwagon effect. Oh, my God. Everyone wants to do a team-based online grindy shooter. So then there's 14 of those released within a year. Oh, Battle Royale's all the rage. So then there's 14 of those released within a year. That's when you get the problem. State of Decay hasn't had a, a sequel in five years. So is it time for another one? Sure. Now, that doesn't excuse it if the game ends up being a buggy mess, but I don't think there's a problem with a sequel to State of Decay. That's at least my personal take on it, okay? Yolo Dopper Cheer, he says, Do you guys get a chance to go to Pike's Place Market in Seattle? And what did Kat think about it? Um... No, we did not. When we were when we had time off, we basically focused on stuff around here. As I said, um, we did a lot of yard work. All right, cleaned up the backyard for the first time in years. Um, actually got a very cheap outdoor rug that we laid down in the backyard, so that now we have a bird, we have a, a bird feeder hanging from a rack that I already owned. And the bird feeder now, the, the seeds will drop down into this rug that we can vacuum or sweep off quickly versus just going into the cracks of the concrete and stuff back there. You know, it's just very boring. You guys, that's what I mean. You guys don't want to hear, the, the, oh, we vacuumed the fucking house out and we cleaned the rugs. Do you really need to hear this? You know what I mean? And then we, well, all right, here you go. We watched The Muppets, the, the Muppets, the recent movie from 2012 together. We watched uh, Oliver and Company. Yeah, well, I'm going to tell you the, the movies we watched. No one cares. It's, <laughs> it's tedium. It's pedestrian stuff. No, nothing really super exciting happened during time away at all. Um, as I said, it was going to be a, a time when... Did we eat out a few times? Sure. La I'll, I'll, full, I'll wholeheartedly tell you, last night we went to a local Mexican place and we had a nice Mexican dinner together. It was inexpensive. It wasn't like we went to some crazy-ass, you know, ridiculous high-dollar restaurant. We wanted to eat out. We went out and I got a nice chair. I got a nice chicken dish. It was a chicken burrito with rice and beans and chicken and a jalapeno and cheese sauce on it. Aren't you super thrilled, Yolo Dopper, to hear all this personal information? Isn't this great? You see what I mean? It's so stupid. Like, and the thing is, I used to go at length about this stuff. And yes, I had fans who loved it and they wanted to hear all of it. But what's the point at this point? You know, th this is just extending the pre-stream instead, <laughs> instead of getting to, to gameplay. This is extending the pre-stream, you know? D do you really need to hear this? I don't think you guys care, you know? I certainly don't think it's anything interesting. So, to answer your question, no. Okay. Mr. Lark did a 100-bit cheer. And he says, Phil, ignorance is bliss. Not everyone is always going to like you. That is certainly true. <clears throat> All right. That is certainly true. You're absolutely true. Yes, not everyone is always going to like me. However, it would be nice if... So the one thing that I think is very sad is that I have a 10-year legacy. 10 years I've been covering games. And let's face it, I've made many mistakes during that time period. And if you watch my evolution over the last decade that I put out videos, boy, have I changed. Boy, has the kind of things that I say and do in my videos changed. You know, I've become a much more uh, intelligent, uh, wise, educated, and uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Mature. Even though, yeah, I'm immature in a lot of ways still. I openly admit that. I've matured in a lot of ways too, okay? Uh, like I said, I'm one of, if not the most prolific gaming YouTuber there ever was, okay? But no one will ever know that because the, the common person just knows all the negatives and that's all they care about. That's all they hear. That's all they care about. And that's what's sad is, well, you know, you're never going to have everyone like you. No, I know that. But it would certainly be nice if at least people had the facts. Like, you have no idea... You know, what I went through, what, whoa, I said what I went through. Didn't really go through because I didn't read all these tweets. I mean, a ridiculous amount of tweets, negative stuff thrown my way over the past two days, of course. But the insane amount of misinformation, just insanity. The, all, the, all the crap you guys have heard for years, that's completely untrue, just basically blew up again. Well, don't worry about his stupid tweet because that's that pedophile. That's that guy that masturbated twice in front of thousands of children on Twitch TV. What? When did any of this happen? None of this is true. But this is all fact now. In the minds of the, the ignorant people who want to propagate drama, this is fact. This is all fact about me. It would be nice if you're going to call me out for the stupid shit I've done. That tweet, okay. Fair enough. That tweet was really fucking dumb. 
And I wholeheartedly agree with you. But the, the, st- the stuff that then people bring up afterward to gang and dogpile on, right, is that's what I wish would, would kind of go away. But it's not gonna. You know? It's not gonna go away. It's not. It's gonna continue on. It's gonna be worse and worse. It, it, basically, I've become the the legendary tall tale of the, the, the worst gamer on the planet, the worst guy on the internet, when in reality, none of it's true. And it's all just propagated by people who love negative, immature shit, you know? And it's sad. It's sad that right now there's actually people with giant followings on YouTube and Twitch who think that stuff is true. (laughs) Because they didn't do two seconds of research. Instead, they just repeat the drama, you know? But it is what it is. That's life, I guess. That will be me for the rest of my life. There's not much I can do about it, right? Unless I move to... Uh, I guess if I move to like Zimbabwe and I live in a, in a grass hut somewhere where there's no internet, maybe then I'll be immune to it, but I doubt that's ever going to happen. So. <laughs> All right. I'll lie, guy. Cheer. He says, can Call of Duty ever get back to its glory days a la Modern Warfare 2? I don't know, man. I don't know because the people who worked on Modern Warfare 2 don't work for the company anymore. Right? They don't. Like, it, 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 all, a lot of the people, it's like the same thing with Street Fighter. Can Street Fighter ever get back to his classic roots? Well, the people who made classic Street Fighter don't work for Capcom. So, I don't know how that could be possible unless they try to literally face rift or rip rip out content from the previous good games and just superimpose it into a new one. You know what I mean? Um, I just don't get it, man. Um, <clears throat> I just don't get it. But at the same time, maybe it will. I don't know. I don't know. Anyway, thank you to Blaine. 007 Blaine tipped me $10, which is the biggest tip for today. So let's go ahead and add 007 Blaine to the top tip. Thank you very much, Blaine. Good to see you. And I certainly hope that you enjoy today's stream. Did I do that right? Yeah, I did. Oh, you know what it is? The L is capital, isn't it? Ah, I'm not going to go back and fix it. <laughs> So thank you, Blaine, for your for your tip. I appreciate that, man. Um, and good to see you. All right, Allosaurus Rex cheered. He says, "You say you are a large you are a large proponent of net neutrality, but the largest supporters and benefactors of it are big tech companies, including Google and YouTube. Are you being paid by Google to shill their corporate interests?" Yes, ladies and gentlemen. You may not realize this, but all this time, all these years, that I've been incredibly critical of Google and YouTube. All the times that I've complained about the changes they make to the website that don't benefit anyone, the ways that they, they ignore the feedback of the, the both the content creators and the viewers, and basically they're a bunch of Ivy League guys who just don't listen and don't know what they're doing. Um, all the years I said that, it was a clever ruse. I've been getting paid behind the scenes, fully by these guys, full time, and I am actually just an automaton, and what I, I am here to secretly and subconsciously push the agendas of Google and YouTube down your throats, and uh, there you go. Full disclosure. I've been I've been unmasked and fully revealed and exposed to the internet, guys. Exposed. I'm fully exposed on stream. So now if I was going to get banned on stream, now there's a perfect reason because I've been fully exposed, full frontal to you guys, okay? It's over. There you go, guys. <laughs> All right. All right. Shout out to All I Guy. Cheered again. He says, do you have an idea why? Your tweet blew up. In my opinion, it wasn't bad enough to garner hundreds of responses. I have no idea. I'm sure what ended up happening was, as usual, whenever I do something stupid, the certain group of people who stalk me across the internet to find me doing something stupid probably gave it to appropriate parties. And more than likely, they they, they, they threw it towards certain Twitch streamers who maybe had been playing, or, or not even just Twitch, because I know I think people were playing it on YouTube too. So certain people who were streaming the game early, they probably threw it their way. And one of them probably took it the, took it as a negative, you know, oh my god, how dare this person insult me and probably tweet it. And then it just blew up from there. You know, sometimes they go viral, sometimes they don't. It's like I said, um, that, you know, so, you know, it's weird because I'm a person who has 10 years of stuff on the internet, right? 10 years. And tons of it is positive. But all people remember are the boneheaded moments of the negative shit. So, you know, there here's another moment. Where one person, you know, got rubbed the wrong way of a tweet that I did that was stupid and shared it probably with a bunch of people and then it just went viral and what are you going to do, right? Um, that's my fault. Again, I should have been wiser and known that putting a stupid tweet out there like that was a dumb idea 
And, you know, I should have, you know, read it and said, well, this is a tweet just for my fans. And they're going to understand what I'm saying because I've already fleshed out my opinions on this subject on my streams. So here's a super badly worded abridged version just to throw it out there and hype up my Friday stream. That was really fucking stupid. Really stupid. Okay. <laughs> All right. But no, in particular, all I guy, do I actually know the story behind it? No, I don't. And the problem line is I don't care. Who cares? I don't. You shouldn't either. It's beating a dead horse at this point, right? Oh, uh, the 500K cheered 325 bits. Thank you, 500K. You're actually the, the second biggest cheerer for today. And he says, glad to have you back, Phil. Thank you, 500K. I appreciate that. Spooky fan. Resubbed for the third month in a row. He says, it's none of your business. If a company decides to give early access to someone, you need to do what you like and not complain that someone else does what they like. Well, bottom line was, I wasn't complaining that someone was doing something they like. <laughs> in fact, it's quite the opposite. But again, I'm not going to get into it. My full thoughts on early access stuff have already been fleshed out. There's no reason for me to go into them yet again. Those of you who watch my streams know my full thoughts that were much more intelligent than my stupid tweet, and there's no reason for me to waste time right now on it, especially seeing how long this pre-stream has been. But I do thank you, Spooky Fan, for your three months of support. Kaisin. Uh, cheer, uh, cheered 100 bits and says the ru the rumor they, is they hit development issues and delays with the campaign so they cut it out. I mean, it's true. I mean, maybe with Black Ops 4, maybe that's the case. Maybe not. We'll never know. It's not like they're eventually going to say until the game's already out. Um, I don't think it matters. At this point, the decision's been made, right? Reef Comic Cheers says your streaming abilities are so strong, dude. The Lollicop Cheers says, aren't you friends with Twitch people? You talk to them about it or am I wrong? Uh, I'm not really friends with anyone when it comes to this kind of stuff. As I've said many, many times over the years, I'm pretty much an island. I always have been. I don't have, like, a group of buddies on YouTube or a group of friends who stream. I mean, do I every once in a while have positive interactions with other people? Sure. But I, every single day, wake up, work my butt off all day, right? And that's it. I don't have time. Like I said, when I'm away from streaming or, or recording, one or the other, and I'm not uploading or whatever, I'm doing other stuff. I'm trying to spend time with my girl. I'm trying to maybe watch some television or <clears throat> basically do everything possible to stay away from gaming, to stay away from Twitch and YouTube. Because if all it was, my entire life was encompassed with that shit, I would hate it. I can't have my entire life be encompassed by my work. I have to have other endeavors and other things I like so that when I go back to the work, it's refreshing. Not that work, 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 100% of the time, I would hate it. So no, I purposely don't have a bunch of friends who are Twitch streamers and a bunch of friends who are YouTubers, and I realize that's very different. You got these groups and communities out there. They all look at after each other. They got each other's back or whatever. Uh, I've never had that. Again, I've always said I'm kind of an island. I'm out there on my own. And everything else goes around around me, and I'm the one island out there that still exists after 10 years. And somehow the 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 climate change and the global warming and the ice caps melting haven't sunk the island yet. Perhaps the shores have receded a bit, but I'm still there. <laughs> wow, what a dramatic analogy that was. Okay, then. Shout out to M. Lark, who cheered again. He says, damage control isn't the solution. Actions speak louder than words. Well, you're right. It doesn't matter how many times I say that tweet was stupid, okay? If I do another stupid tweet right away, then it doesn't really matter, does it? So what I got to do, like I said, I got to be better. What I need to do is use, use Twitter for business purposes and basically stay as concise and to the point and talk about my stuff only and not keep veering off the track, okay? Just being real talk here, um, you know? I need to basically be better and not do stupid shit. And just, like I said, I even said immediately after this happened, I said, I should just use Twitter for positive messages and schedule updates and work-related stuff. And instead of, you know, let me now use Twitter to talk about a controversial topic. This is really stupid. Why would I do that? But I'm, like I said, it was a stupid tweet. Um, I got to be better. So you're absolutely right, Mr. Lark. It's one thing to, to, to apologize or backtrack or, you know, mea, what, what, what is it called? The mea culpa or whatever. Um, but there's a different thing entirely to, to change and be better. And that's what I got to do. You know? So there you go. I got an anonymous dollar tip. 
He says, you should unblock Proxidist on Twitter. Wow. This is pretty much the worst possible place for you to ask for that because I'm not on Twitter at all right now. And I won't be probably until later tonight when I'm updating my schedule and the like. Um, I'm not going to remember that you asked to have this guy unbanned. And I don't know who Proxidist is. The best way, if you want to get someone unbanned, would be to email me and say, can you please unban this person? Either if it's Twitch or Twitter, whatever. Give me their name. And then when I get a chance, I'll review the situation. If it's someone who I think is worthy of unbanning, I'll do it. And, you know, a lot of the times I do. Sometimes I don't. That's the method you should do it. Tipping me a dollar as a bribe during a stream is not going to increase anyone's chances of getting unbanned, just so you know. So, there you go. And the email, by the way, is darksidefill at hotmail.com, just for the record. Uh, Omega Man, cheers, said, can't you buy green self-proof foam? Well, I could, but see, Omega Man, that's not how it works. If you buy green self-proofing foam, um, you need to have it be completely 100%, um, what's the word I'm looking for? Basically, there can't be any shadows. When you have a green screen, it needs to be flat. It needs to actually be, like, spread out and flat so that you can see, uh, what do they call Chroma key? You can see in the chroma key that there's no ripples, there's no shadows. If there's a ripple, a shadow, the whole green screen setup gets screwed up, okay? Soundproofing foam, the reason it works is because it's not flat. Soundproofing foam is jutted. It actually has, here, I'll show you. Hold on a second, guys. I'll actually show you what I mean. Turn on my webcam and get rid of the art for a second. So you see this foam behind me? This is jutted foam. It's sticking out, pointy. That's why it soundproofs, because the sound hits it and gets caught, all right? If this were flat, it would actually reflect the sound back. That's why when you look in soundproofing booths, when people like professional singers or voice actors, all the walls are covered in this completely, and it absorbs sound tremendously because of the shape. To have green soundproofing foam, well, number one, it wouldn't look like a green screen. It would just look terrible if you tried to do green screen on it. And it, uh, if I had it flat to make it a good green screen, then it wouldn't be soundproofing at all. So there you go. Trust me, I looked into all this stuff. <laughs> I did. Uh, shout out to the lollipop again, she heard and said, from, you, from your view, how would you fix YouTube problems that it has now? Seems you know a lot of stuff, unlike YouTube, who screws people up and recommending drama of it. Bottom line, lollipop, I'm not going to get into it. This is not the time or place. We've already had a one hour and 27 minute pre-stream, and it still has no signs of stopping because of so many contributions today. All right. Um, and I am appreciative of the contributions. Thank you guys very much. Just understand it's, it's making the pre-stream be incredibly long, which I think we all knew it was going to be. Um, but no, I'm not going to get into it now. I thank you, Lollicott, for the cheer, but this is not the place for that. Maybe in the future. All right. Um, ISD Captain Cheers, did you go to Rocco's Pizza in Seattle during your off time? No, as I said, uh, most of our time was spent locally. Most of our time was spent around here doing stuff around the house, which is why I got such bad sunburn on the sides of my neck. Um, <clears throat> and why I'm so goddamn sore, you know, cleaning the house, digging, <laughs> you know, not a good idea, but that's what I did because I'm an idiot. I don't know. I should have just relaxed, but hey, it is what it is. Spring cleaning is done at least. Um, Kate cheered and said, Phil, have you made a decision about B though? Sorry, I wanted to know. Uh, uh, yeah, I made a decision. He's not coming back. After all the feedback I got from everybody, uh, pretty much overwhelmingly the, the, the consensus that was reached was the guy caused too much trouble and there's nothing, there's no evidence to show that this guy's going to come back and not just do again what he did or, or again, be underhanded and try to do stuff. So he ain't coming back. I'm sure B the could easily create a new name, come back, and just behave, and no one would know that it's him. But the bottom line is, he came back, immediately started acting like himself, everyone knew it was him, and got banned again. <laughs> so there you go. Alright. King Swaggin Studios says, you made changes to the yard and stuff, can we see an updated house tour? No. No. I'm not doing a house tour. I'm done with it, dude. I'm serious, I'm done with it. I, I kind of explained this already. There's no reason to do them anymore. If there's a holiday and we're putting up a Christmas tree and we have Christmas decorations, will I take pictures? Sure. You know, home decor every once in a while. If there's a holiday, you know, during the fall, I'm sure we'll put out some Halloween themed stuff. I'll show you that in a picture on Instagram. I'm not doing house tours no more, dude. It's over. I told you that era is over. I can't, man. I can't. Um, It's that simple. I, I can't do it anymore. Uh, sharing personal stuff always blows up in my face. And who's to say... That someone won't get something, uh, you know, oh my god, did you see? 
<clears throat> there was a power cord hanging off a wall, and I did the research, and that power cord plugs into a $4,000 computer that Phil hides in his bedroom. Some stupid shit. Is, I'm just tired of it. I'm done with it. I'm not doing it. So the answer is no. Reeve Comic cheered again. He said, the pre-stream makes you unique compared to all other streamers. It's your selling point. Like your raw, uncut content. I don't think the pre-stream is my selling point. I completely disagree with you there. Hall and Oates tipped me a dollar. So watch out, Phil. Twitter will chew you up. Oh, here Twitter comes. Twitter's a man-eater. Anyway, good for you knowing and accepting what you wrote was bad. And owning up to a good serve, very good. Shout out to King Swaggins, who says, I get where you're coming from when it comes to being able to have more interactivity during games that don't have deep stories. But I felt that these games like PUBG, uh, <clears throat> State of Decay, The Division, etc. have had more success when you play them with a group of friends. I can't see you playing these games alone if you weren't streaming. Well, I, again, I agree with you. If I was playing State of Decay 2 by myself, offline, maybe it ain't so fun. But playing it, you know, with people on stream, fun. Playing it co-op, fun. So I agree with you there. But I think playing it on stream will be awesome starting tomorrow. Yolo Dopper cheered again. He said, you shouldn't go so hard on yourself. You expressed your opinion and nobody has the right to insult you for it. But Yolo Dopper, what you don't seem to understand is that that tweet was not my opinion. That tweet was was horrible. It was not even close to my full thoughts on the subject. That, that tweet was just plain old wrong. Factually wrong. And it should never have been put out that way. That's why I'm being hard on myself. Not because, oh, I have an opinion people disagree with. That's completely different from what I put. My opinion is not even what I put on Twitter. That's why I need to fess up and say I need to be better. Not because my opinion is not a popular one. Tech Visor cheered. He said, isn't it a bit silly to say other streamers should do a bit of research on you when you're too busy to watch other people's content? I'm sure they're busy too and just want to join in on a shitstorm. Well, okay, fair enough. But here's the thing. All right, here's the thing. So, it's easy to say, to be an armchair quarterback, I think they call it, or to be a backseat driver, or to actually be the person in that position, all right? I completely disagree with a certain practice. I disagree with anyone getting advanced games, and I think not only does it directly hurt the business in general of gaming, but it hurts... The common gamer, it hurts other streamers. It hurts a bunch of people who get hurt. So I speak up against it, okay? So fair enough, right? Now, other streamers should do a bit of research on me when I'm too busy to watch other people's content. First of all, I don't need to watch a million hours of someone's content. I don't even need to watch a single second of someone else's content to understand that my belief on pre, pre-release games, them getting games early, and them getting ridiculous amounts of views, early views just because they got the game early, I don't need to watch their stream to know that. All right? I don't need to know that. I don't, I'm not criticizing their stream style. I'm not criticizing their gameplay style. I'm not criticizing anything about the content on their stream. The only thing I'm criticizing is the fact they're playing a, a pre-release game early, okay? They're, they're getting it before anyone else can get it. They've been the selected, privileged few, and they're getting ridiculous amounts of views just because they're playing it early. That's what I'm criticizing. So just the fact knowing they're streaming it early is enough for me to give the criticism that I'm giving. All right? Now, for one of these people to come out and say, well, I heard Phil's a pedophile and Phil's this and that. I'm sorry. All right? That's ridiculously different than just saying, well, I heard that this streamer is playing a game early. Oh, by the way, it's factually true. You can just look on Twitch's dashboard and here they are doing it. All right? That's black and white, completely different, all right? Saying ridiculously slanderous, defamatory comments about someone without a lick of any kind of proof is fucked up. It's completely irresponsible, it's immoral, and it's sad that there's thousands of people now on the internet who believe that stuff about me because people have spread it as fact because they didn't do the research and just reported the rumors, reported the drama, reported this, or excuse me, repeated the rumors, the drama, and the slander, all right? It would be one thing if the things about me that were said were things that were matter of fact. Matter of fact, all right, I put out a bad tweet. You're right. Matter of fact, you could criticize me till the cows come home about that. It was there on Twitter in black and white. I did it. Good. Criticize me for it. Tear me apart. Rip me a new bunghole. That's fair criticism. To now propagate stuff that's completely untrue because someone told you is bullshit, okay? And that's the difference. 
actual black and white evidence of something that leads to valid criticism versus I heard something and now I'm going to repeat this really derogatory, defamatory thing about someone. You know, the thing I disagree with is that people get these pre-release copies early and play them and get tons of artificial views because they get the games before anyone else and profit and it hurts the industry in my opinion. Okay, it does. Uh, you, you guys already know how I think that people should be very much more patient. They shouldn't rush out to buy games on release day. Wait a day or two. We don't need these early reviews. You know all this. I'm not going to get into detail about it here. But that's very different than saying, oh, well, this guy's a pedophile. That's insane. And if you think it's the same thing, if you actually think that's the same thing, you are silly. So there you go. All right. Infinite did a 1,000-bit cheer. Thank you, Infinite. You are now the cheerleader for today's stream. I don't, think, I don't know if this pre-stream is ever going to end. This, is gonna be, this definitely is the longest pre-stream I've ever done. I think I knew it was going to be, though. <laughs> Good thing we got a short game in, uh, in Dead Space 2's DLC today, huh? So thank you, Infinite, for the top cheer for the day. Appreciate that. And Infinite says the following. He says, hold on. Hey, Phil, good to see you back. I don't think you should be apologizing for excising your freedom of speech, even if what you said was a mistake. This tweet nonsense is a non-issue as far as I'm concerned. I disagree. I absolutely disagree. Because, you know, uh, you know not to say that what I said was even that bad. Even if I did believe that what I said was a factually true, which I don't, it still wouldn't have been that bad. But what if someone goes on Twitter and immediately says, uh, I think that all people of a certain race are inferior and everyone else is superior and they should be exterminated. Well, do you think that should go on Twitter? Of course not. <laughs> that should not be allowed and people should be held accountable and obviously be judged for that kind of a situation. I mean, that's crazy. I mean, I mean we learned from history. That's insane, right? So, you know, that should definitely be held again. You know, no, people should not be able to have these insane beliefs that, they, that you know, things, you know, if it's harmful to others, it shouldn't be allowed. Was what I, what I said on Twitter harmful to others? Yeah, I think it was. I honestly think it was. Is it physically threatening? No, but we already talked about this earlier on this pre-stream, that bullying or misinformation that's on the internet can be harmful to others. And what I said was factually wrong and should be called out for. So I actually disagree with you on this point, Infinite. I think that what I did was wrong and fair game that people should st step up and criticize me for doing it because it was my mistake and I need to admit mistakes and grow. Okay? It's that simple. All right. Kozatov. Subscribe for the sixth month in a row. Although earlier Kozatov was asking for a sub, so I think someone gifted him this sub. So if that's the case, thank you to whoever gifted it and welcome to six months of subscription Cause it all. Oh, uh, let's see here. Allosaurus Rex cheered, and now he's talking about the tractors, and I'm not going to bother with that. Uh, but thank you for the cheer. NWO Hollywood Hogan did a 49 bit cheer. Thank you, NWO Hollywood Hogan, for the cheer. Appreciate that. Cat out a bag cheered and said, Phil, when do you think the prime age is to have children? Do you plan on having children? I, first of all, I don't think there is a prime age, I think everyone's different. All right, my always my personal philosophy in life was if I was going to have kids that I should be in a situation where I know that I could provide those kids with a good life with, you know, being safe, uh, you know, a roof over their heads, being able to put get them into a good school, provide them with health care, whatever they need, food, you know, the important stuff for being, you know, my kid. They deserve that. And... Were there times in my life where that was the situation? I think so. And are there times in my life when there wasn't? I think so. Right now is not the time. And quite frankly, guys, I mean, I've already said this many times. I'll say it again. No, I have no plans on having kids at this point in my life. With the crazy amount of shit that happens, drama and all kinds of stuff on a daily basis. The fact that I do get systematic harassment on a daily basis for things that I both do and don't do. Um, no, I would not want to have a kid in that situ life situation. So, no... I have no plans on having kids. Do I know the prime age? No, I don't. All I know is my own personal belief. Allosaurus Rex says, Did you go to Gameworks Arcade in Seattle during your time off? No. I don't even know what that is. What is Gameworks Arcade? I know there's one arcade in Seattle that I believe is really close to the convention center. 
And I think I walked into it once and it smelled terrible and I immediately walked out again. <laughs> but I am not aware of if that is the arcade you're referencing. And no, I've never been to a GameWorks arcade. There you go. Uh, Omega Man cheered again. He says, what do you think about the British crowds versus US crowds at WWE events or, or overseas seem loud? Well, they are. Because what you got to remember is that WWE is primarily stationed in the United States. Yes, they do have many international tours, but when they go to a, a, one of these countries like the UK, it's a special event. So those crowds get rowdy and hype because it's a rarity to be able to be there and see them versus in the US, half the time they can't even fill the arenas. That's the God's honest truth. A lot of the times the Raw SmackDown shows are based in US cities. Half the people are told, go sit on the other side to make it look like the arena's filled because we couldn't even sell out the place. So there you go. Two Bar King just resubscribed at tier two for the seventh month in a row. Thank you guys. Thank you, Two Bar King, for that. I appreciate that. Hold on one second because I hear a truck outside and I'm curious to see who it is. <laughs> Wasn't anything with me. It's a truck of uh, the people actually next door to, to my community here. So, okay. Um, but thank you, Two Bar King, for the Tier 2 sub. I appreciate that. Shout out to a Baby Vampire who cheered and said, This pre stream is wilder than an episode of Jerry Springer's. <laughs> okay, then. I, I, I certainly don't know why you think that. <laughs> I don't think anything wild has happened on this pre stream at all. Um, but okay. Uh, I got an anonymous dollar tip. Uh, I'm exploding, excuse me. I got an anonymous dollar tip, and the person says, I have been a fan since you played Fable 2. You said you don't like people playing pre-release games. I recall you playing Fallout 4. Um, yeah, listen. As I've said many times, because again, I've, uh, I've addressed this a million times in the past, um, I'm not infallible, and there were actually, if I remember correctly, three distinct times in ten years... 10 years, hundreds upon hundreds of games that I've played, 60,000 plus videos that I put out on the internet, there were three games that if I remember correctly, I played them early. One was Street Fighter Cross Tekken, one was Fallout 4, and one was Dark Souls 3. So on one hand, I can count the three times that I went against my own personal philosophy of pre-release games for various different reasons. You know, every single one actually was a completely different reason. If at some point in the future we want to discuss this and get into massive detail about it, we can. But considering that this pre-stream is one hour and 42 minutes long, all right, I don't really think that we should get into the, the specifics of it right now. But basically every situation had a reason where I had to weigh pros and cons and say, do I bite the bullet and do I go against my own personal morality and belief philosophy and do this against my own belief system for the good of what? Various things. For the good of my viewers, for the good of myself and my business, you know. And a lot of the times, it's, it's, the, it's, it's, what's the word I'm looking for? The lesser of two evils, I guess, right? In a lot of cases. And that's really what it was in those situations, okay? Um, so, in that regard, you know, you're right. Three times ever in ten years where I went against my own personal philosophy for various reasons, you got me. Okay, then. All right, shout out to T-Dubs. And he says, oh, Phil, I swear you've been asked that question about children like five times in the last three weeks. I probably was. I don't know why, but I guess I was. <laughs> You're probably right, T-Dubs. Um, but yeah, okay. Um, let's see here. Count a bag says you tweeted saying you knew many of my viewers have limited mobility like myself. How would it apply to your viewers and yourself? I didn't say that. I didn't say that I have limited mobility at all. <laughs> that is completely incorrect. I did not say that. In fact, since you are bringing it up, hold on a second. Let's see here. I'm going to find it here. Oh, my God. Uh, it's, it's impossible to read my Twitter feed now because there's so much garbage in it. Here we go. As someone who knows that many of my viewers have limited mobility, but they're avid gamers like myself, this news is amazing. What I just said is that they're avid gamers like myself. I didn't say that 
I have limited mobility. You're reading it wrong. And basically, it's semantics. You're basically tr purposely trying to read the thing wrong, all right, in order to make it look like I said something. I didn't say that. I don't have a limited mobility. At one point, I did. At one point, my back injury was so bad that I did have limited mobility, but certainly not anymore. So, stop. Stop trying to make a negative out of stuff. Ridiculous. <clears throat> Uh, T-Dubs cheered. He says, the truck is Twitch coming to shut you down manually. Uh, I'm pretty sure if someone were to try to shut down my stream, they wouldn't do it manually and come snip the wire. <laughs> uh, Vulcan cheered. He said, how, how did Kat enjoy the days off with you? She enjoyed them too. And we, like I said, we both agree. We kind of made this agreement. We said, these were good days together, but the next time that, that I take any time and time off, which will probably be, like I said, August, September, um... Instead of doing what we did here where we kind of overworked, you know, ourselves to get stuff done around the house, we just want to have relaxation time. Because, you know, now she's back to work, I'm back to work, and we're both goddamn tired and sore. We're like, what the hell? Why did we do this? You know, not to say that it wasn't needed. I mean, the house needed a once over and everything, but, you know, could have definitely done it less strenuous, you know, than we did, so... <clears throat> Resident Evil beating cheer. He said, would you be interested in playing the Time Crisis series at some point in the summer? I'd love to watch Time Crisis 1 through 4 because they're fast games to beat, so I think they would be perfect to play for entertainment's sake. Uh, I don't know if light gun style games <clears throat> are anything that would be entertaining for someone else to watch at all. I mean, as someone who's grown up in arcades, as I did, um, I don't think I ever even enjoyed watching someone else play a light gun game. Like, just, we, I want to play The House of the Dead, one of my favorite light gun games of all time. When I'm playing it, I love it. Watching someone else play it is like watching paint dry. I want to play it. I want to shoot the zombies, right? Um, so, honestly, I don't think it would be a good idea. I don't know if anyone would care about seeing me do that, so. All right, uh, Allosaurus Rex, boy. Allosaurus Rex asks, does it make someone less of a man to raise their wife's boyfriend's kid? This is, their wife's boyfriend's kid. These are not the kind of questions for me, Allosaurus. Perhaps you want to seek uh, a family counselor or, you know, maybe a, a, something, a, a religious, uh, a religious moral, moral support, you know, maybe your local pastor or I don't know what religion you are, if you all do practice religion. Those may be the kind of people you want to ask those kind of questions. Um, I think I'm the last person to give you any kind of answer and I think it's quite ridiculous, but thank you for the cheer. Okay, the Archangel. Cheered and said, let's start the stream. Oh, wait a minute. You guys actually want to see gameplay on this stream? I thought that we just, just a, you know, a four hours of me talking. Because <laughs> that's what it's been so far. <laughs> <clears throat> that's what it is so far. I don't know what's happening here. I'm scratching my head here. Oh, brother. All right. So, I guess... I guess we're good. I think we've finally gotten through all the cheers, subs, and tips. Well, oh, I have to check the sub count. Let's do that. Hold on. Let's see what the sub count is. I do expect subs to drop significantly, by the way. Which So even though we got six new subs during this pre-stream, our subs went down. <laughs> I knew it. I told you guys, the subs are going to go down even further because uh, I know there was a big jump in subs that we had around mid-month of April. And all that's going into effect right now, so... So anyway, thank you guys very much. Um, <clears throat> thank you guys very much for uh, subbing, for your cheers, for your tips, for all of your support. I do appreciate it. Uh, just so you guys know, what are we doing today? Just as, Since it's been an hour 45 minutes since I last said it, I guess I should reiterate it again. We're going to do the Dead Space 2 Severed DLC on Zealot Difficulty. Now people are saying it's only about 90 minutes long. So chances are I may actually finish this DLC very early, in which case we're going to switch over quickly and do a little bit of impromptu Ultra Street Fighter 2. And then tonight I'll be playing PUBG on my second stream at 6.15 p.m. Pacific time. Fair enough? All right. All right, guys. Thank you so much for your support. Sorry the pre-stream was insanely long. We all knew it was going to be. And now we can finally actually play some games. Can you believe it? Can you believe it? All right. All right, guys. That's it. Let's end the pre-stream. Finally. Thank God. All right. Here we go.